And this car S stands for sleeper. I'm Steph. <laughs> I'm Jay. And this is Modern Motoring. Today we're in the 2023 Volvo S60 Recharge. And if you go, really? I hadn't thought about that car at all. Neither did we. And spoiler alert, we're pretty darn happy with it. <laughs> but it's here, it's good. It's a plug-in hybrid, which I think is the best option right now. Mm. So here's my problem. <laughs> here we go. Can I start with a positive while you gather your thoughts? I love yeah. the current Volvo look on everything. The Thor's hammer headlights. But that's so old though. I love it. I think it's well, so, so do I. timeless. It's, I think it's classic. Mm. It's going to be one of those automotive designs that we that are in textbooks because they'll really? be, oh, I think so, because it lasts right. so well. Okay, what's your thing? The black edition. Everybody's doing a black edition. They are. Now here's my problem with this one. Mm -hmm. It's $2,100. Okay which is fine and fair. Everyone needs to charge something for something. Mm -hmm. But it's how little you get mm. with this black package. So for again, the $2,100, you get upgraded 19-inch wheels, which are black. Mm -hmm. The design's fine. It's not here nor there or good or bad. It's mm -hmm. happily average. The lettering on the back is black and the grill is black that's it that's all now the cool thing is how the volvo logo actually looks because you can see it here on the steering wheel mm. and it's silver and the grill is black to begin with they've just made it glossy black but they've made the logo black mm -hmm. so it looks like the word of volvo is just floating in the middle of nowhere mm. and that part looks cool mm. but i don't think i would go and spend 2100 dollars. i'm with you on the front end it looks good mm. i just wish there was a little more black to the black edition mm. and the taillights have that nice Volvo C shape there's nothing wrong with the design it's not boxy it's not overly round it's perfect for the class and ages so well in any mm. body style you put this design on it's just you know pretty not that bad yeah I mean it's, <laughs> it's been around since 2014 I think was when the XC90 launched with yeah. this design language and it was the first under under the ownership with from Geely yep. um, and every single thing that's been made with the Volvo brand since looks consistently the same and consistently classy and I think it's gonna age super well moving on to the inside I mean it's a pretty standard compact sedan I think part of the reason that I love this design so much might be familiarity because my best friend owns an XC60 and she got it in this exact oh, really? colorway with the black and then the wood that has the brown and the, the black lines through mm -hmm. it that sort of ties into the black interior and I think it looks super sharp. We've done a bunch of all those and you've seen, hopefully you've seen most of them, if not all of them. So I'm just going to go through a couple of weird things that I've noticed. I think this is a size issue mm. but every other Volvo we've had for this little centerpiece mm -hmm. there's a front piece mm -hmm. with useless storage right so I can't see I miss it for functionality I miss it for familiarity you know what I miss from here that is m more functional though is mm. most Volvos in this design language have the little uh, rollers the to do the, the drive, drive modes, modes. And now yeah you're making me suffer it's half serious and half truthful please don't make me look at a screen and dig and dig at 100 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. That's, to change the drive modes is what we're talking about here. I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I feel I have to do it. The voice controls are pretty good, but in the time that it takes me to say what I want, I can just do it myself. Mm -hmm. Infotainment system's fine. Size-wise, it could be bigger, it could be smaller. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make a difference. It seems to be a consistent nine inch screen across everything Volvo makes. It's just too much for lines. Anyway, we've gone out about that enough and enough and enough. Anyway, so the seats are great and comfortable. They're typical Volvo. This does have the upgraded $1,000 audio system. Mm. It's not that extremely high-end one. This one has 14 speakers through a 600 watt amplifier. It's fine. Mm. Nothing's, again, nothing's really wrong with it. Digital dash is still here like it always is. And you can either get a map in the background or you cannot in a world where everyone's doing everything and you mm -hmm. can configure so many different things and get creative with it. I hope the next generation of Volvos give us some kind of additional customizability. Nice big sunroof, which helps to brighten up this otherwise sort of dark interior. Volvo seats are legendary. These are no exception. I mm. love them, adjustable many ways, really comfortable headrests, really nice leather. And that little flag on the yeah. side of the seats that is their thing even though everybody knows it's just a nice little extra piece of attention uh back seats yeah so 
good amount of leg room for the size class, actually. Mm. Um, optional heated seats on here. There's a climate package in Canada that includes the heated rear seats and the washers for the headlights. And a heated steering wheel. Right. So onto the highway we go. So quick engine specs are, it's a two liter turbo four and 455 horsepower, 523 pound fitted torque through an eight speed automatic. Plug-in hybrid gives you up to 64 kilometers of range for an 18.8 kilowatt per hour battery. This thing is fast. It's so fast. I'm gonna put it into power mode here. Do you wanna explain the drive modes while I'm getting ready to accelerate? Yes, yeah, so we have hybrid, power, pure, and constant all wheel drive. Pure is their pure electric mode and you've gotta rack up your kilometers, which you can do by charging the battery as you drive. You can put it to hold so you can hang on to it for other purposes or later purposes or automatic, which is regular hybrid. And I'm gonna stop talking because it even sounds good. Oh. Which is uncharacteristic of Volvo. Volvos yeah. don't really have any kind of a reputation for sounding good. Like they are good and mm. they feel good, but just enough of a presence. Do it again. Uh, all right, Volvo. Mm -hmm. I think the, good. the better thing for me, even over the engine sound, is just how peppy this thing is. It's at low speeds. It better be. Oh like, my gosh. All that power. Now it's a combination of engine and the battery as well. So that's how you're getting both. So we're back into hybrid mode, mm -hmm. which I think most people will hang out there during better months and constant all wheel drive uh, is going to be, well, what you're gonna go through for anything but the weather that you see in the background of this video. 2022 saw up to 35 kilometers of electric range through an 11.6 kilowatt per hour battery. We've almost doubled that now. See, so we are at up to 64 through an 18.8. So double on the range almost, but not double on the battery size. That's plenty for me. Yeah, and that's an upgrade to all Volvo Sedans. 60 and 90 models, sedan and SUV for 2023, the plugins. If you do a lot of regular city driving, mm -hmm. I would just keep it in charge and just tap that through a couple of different menu digs uh, to get into the pure mode. So right now we're in hybrid, I'm gonna flip it to pure. I'm gonna flip it to pure. <laughs> all right, so it feels good. It's incredible. It's yeah, so it's beginning. really nice. And Purius forces it to stay in electric mode until your battery is drained. Right, so right now we've got 12 kilometers. We started with zero, and I set it to charge. So depending on what you want, what you need, what you like, as far as how you consume energy in a plug-in hybrid, I don't like how to get there, but I like that there are three different options. On the fuel consumption, so it is a 60.2 liter tank of premium fuel, and the figures are pretty good. Now it's the battery speaking, but 8.0 liters per hundred kilometers on city streets, 7.2 on the highway and a combined total of 7.6. And the LE, which is the liters electric per hundred kilometers is three. Aside from the iffy infotainment. Yeah. I, this could be the sleeper car for me of the year in the sedan world, both luxury and performance. We'll get a lot more into that once we go to the wrap up but the fuel figures check all the right boxes. They do, and I mean, just generally speaking, it's all wheel drive. It drives really well, it handles really well. Um, you've got really good handling to go with all that power. It keeps up and yeah. the steering is on point. Uh, everything about this, I'm, I'm really quite shocked. This was not a car that was on my radar. All right, let's dig into the pricing. So for this car, you're looking at $62,050 base, which is too high to qualify for the plug-in hybrid incentives, unfortunately, but um, a fair price nonetheless mm -hmm. in, in the segment for what it is. As tested here with a couple of options, we're at $64,400, and the Freight and PDI is 2315, bringing us to a total of $66,715. It's pretty good. It's in, it's really good. I wouldn't get, well, that's not true. I, I wouldn't get these options. I would spring for whatever it cost for that big, massive audio system. Mm. Because if I'm gonna be in a car, I wanna have mm -hmm. good music. So for the competition, mm -hmm. you take this or the BMW M340i. That's a tough one. I know, I know. Like that was my second favorite BMW. Yeah, um, I would take the BMW because I would the performance is very close and I would want that infotainment system more. It's weird, so I think of it as close as well, but the numbers are nowhere near right. what they should be. So the BMW has that three liter in line six with 300, I'm gonna check my notes, 82 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. You know what, I just changed my mind. No, I, I'm taking this because that 64 kilometers of electric driving 
going to save so much more money over yeah. the long term in terms of not having to spend it on fuel. I do. I love that BMW. I do. But it's a bit of an unfair comparison. Yeah. But we're going with the closest things power wise. The Genesis G70, which has a 3.3 liter V6, can have a 3.3 liter V6. Mm -hmm. uh, where's that power figure? 365, 376, 4 horsepower and torque. Which one are you taking? This. That's really? an easy one for me. Yeah. Again, it comes back to that all electric range. Just the ability to be able to drive this in electric mode for 64 kilometers, and it's pretty much the same on price. Okay. Uh, Acura TLX Type S. Mm. It's okay if this isn't on anyone's radar. Wasn't it's, on mine. It was not at all on mine. It should be, and even with the power figures being what they are, I'm fine if they go lower as long as they keep the 64 kilometers mm. up to 64 kilometers of range. If you like luxury sedans, put it on your list. It just you drives so well. You don't have to buy it include it. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that button so that you can subscribe and not miss any more of our reviews. And we're on all the major social media platforms as well. We love hearing from you. So please reach out and thanks for watching.